Hey, what's up? My name is Pete Zen. Welcome to my channel where I do van videos, music videos, other weird punk stuff. Today we're checking out Drum Daddy by Ingram Audio. <laughs> So Ingram Audio was created by Nick Ingram, or Ingram, I'm not really sure how to say it. Nick in my Instagram DMs. He's worked on records with Hawthorne Heights, Beartooth, one of my favorites, City Lights, which is the greatest easy core band of all time that never got as big as they should have. And all the drums that you're hearing from this program are recorded at his studio, Capitol House Studio. So the mics are running through his signal chain and the compressor reacts like his compressor and the EQ reacts to EQ that he would use. In the demo you just heard, I did all the mixing in the program, and then on the master bus, I had an SSL bus compressor, and I'm pretty sure that's it. So let's get into it. I'll show you how I got that sound. Okay, so Nick, drum daddy. The colors you chose are perfect. They match my room. I got pink. I got blue. Uh, you have yellow, which my old band, Hang Tight, was pink and yellow. I love it. It's like the perfect sort of like punk rock plugin. So here's how the plugin is laid out. You have kick, snare, toms and cymbals. Now in the cymbals you have the ride, china, splash, and hi-hat, which you can control the volume, pan, and EQ independently of the overheads. In each of the channels you have the direct signal, you have the overhead signal, and you have the room signal. So let's say in the snare you want to boost the room to get that arena rock sound, and then in the kick you want to keep it low so that it's nice and punchy, you can do that, and none of it's going to bleed into the cymbals itself. So on top of the volume control and the EQ control right above, you have release, sustain, girth, stank which is like the overtone i'm not sure if it's like a parallel compressor that was sort of cranked and you can like in that sort of mixing it in or if it was recorded like that and then reverse engineered to be tighter from there but either way it's a really cool feature to have then you have attack and you have output there's four kicks to choose from and there's like how many one two three four five six seven there's seven snares to choose from and then there's toms there's just uh, one shell per tom, but you can mess with the pitch and you can mess with the release and sustain to make it sound like a totally different drum And then same thing with the cymbals. It's it's just the cymbals are what they are But you can mess with the pitch and then you also have a compressor that you can mess with as, as well So in the program down here You can root out all the drums to be on their own aux buses But I did the mix within the plugin and then I just did a bus comp here on top Which you can copy my settings if you want. I sort of just blend in um, a pretty light spanking compressor i call it pumping okay so i'm going to go through the kit i'm going to solo all the pieces so you can see the sound that i was going for and at the end if you don't feel like copying in all the settings i'll put a link in the description where you can download that preset and just upload it if you do end up picking up drum daddy Let's start with the kick so i have a little bit of highs i took out some mids i took out some low mids and then the low is flat pitch is zero release and sustain is kind of short the girth is up all the way the stank is kind of low let me show you what it would sound like if the stank was up really high Tons of overtones, so you can really hear the room in the close mic. That must be a pretty slam compressor. And then the attack is kind of high, and then the output is the output just to set the volume. And then here's the overhead blended in. Sort of filling out that kick, making it sound more natural. And I'm just taking out some lows in that. And then here's the room blended in. The room by itself, let me turn up. Cool, and that's the kick. I'll go through the other kicks real quick so you can hear that. Yeah, I like that 24 by 16, the last one. I feel like it has a lot of saturation, a lot of uh, mid-range punch. Even though I ended up taking that out, the actual direct signal of it is pretty punchy. Okay, so for the snare, sort of the same thing. I took out some mids and I boosted the highs a lot in this one. I have the release and sustain all the way up and the pitch is turned down a touch just to give it a little bit more fatness. The girth is all the way up, the stank's in the middle, the attack is in the middle and the output is just setting the volume. Let me show you what it sounds like with the stank all the way up. Here's with the overhead blended in. Here's with the direct signal off. And then here's the room. And all three together, I think, make a really good snare sound. Let me show you some of the other snares that we have. Maple, 14 by 8. 
maple 14 by 5. A brass snare, which is sort of like a black beauty or something. A fat snare, which is just like an indie snare. A nice poppy snare, a steel snare, 14 by 8. Be great for like blast beats or breakdowns or something. A little bit fatter snare, steel number two, and then a custom. Cool. I'm going to keep it on that brass for now, actually. All right, and then here are the toms. Those are just the direct signals. I have the low boosted pretty high, and then I have the low mids cut out, which I think is around like 400, 500 hertz. And then here's the overhead, adding some air. Here's the room adding even more air. And I have the stank turned all the way down. All right, so here's the symbols, just the overheads. Super clear, no phase issues, sounding really good. All right, I'm gonna blend in the hi-hat. And then let me show you the room. So it's sort of just like a washiness, making the symbols sound a little bit more real. And then here's the whole kit. So I could have gone in and given the velocities a bit more love uh, and attention to make it sound a little bit more dynamic. But for this mix, I thought it sounded cool. Uh, just really slamming. It sort of sounds like bare tooth or something. And it's not like it sounds fake. It just sounds a little bit unnatural. Like your drummer takes steroids and really slams the whole entire time, which in today's productions anyway, you're gonna be quantizing, you're gonna be compressing, you're gonna be gating. So this ultimately is the goal. But if you did want super natural drums, you can go in and really mess with the velocities. And the velocities in this are super different from any other drum program I've used. It seems like from zero to 60, it's like the softest of soft hits. And then from 60 up, it's like hard hits and then extremely hard hits. So overall, I think Drum Daddy's great. It has a bigger room than most programs have. Um, so that could be great for hard rock or metal or even some slamming sort of like pop punk stuff. And also, if you don't want to use any of the features, you can just use the raw samples and blend it in with a real kit. If your kit either wasn't recorded in a great room, or if your kit pieces aren't that great, or you're just not getting the drum sound that you want. I think Drum Daddy is super simple, super straightforward, and easy to just open up, load up a preset, and start demoing or recording or doing whatever you have to do. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Again, my name is Pete Zen. If you enjoyed that video, please like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, and I'll keep posting videos. Thanks, guys.